What's up, Ocean? You got Matt here, coach of your Montreal Mylotic, bringing you our week five battle for the BBR. We are sitting at a record of three and one and coming off the back of two 5 0 wins in a row. We are killing it right now and we are facing off against Davian and his Vegas Golden Dragonites. Davian, from my understanding, he was in draft leagues a while ago he then left the community for a bit or he stopped being in draft leagues just retired for a bit now he's back into the league he's in the bbr and he's doing pretty well for himself his team's a little bit weird though and uh this is the team that actually has the corvinite i swear to god this is the team that has corvinite yes he has corvinite i made sure of it not like in week two against uh against the bristol Driftloons. but hey we we know this team i feel pretty good because his only ground type is the Stunfisk, so Raikou can go in, but at the same time, you might be looking at your screen and saying, what the hell is that? Meteor Beam Special Metagross? Yeah, it kind of goes in if you guys look at his team, but let's go ahead and jump into it, guys. I do want to say before we do, thank you so much for helping us hit 1,000 subscribers, guys. Oh my god, we have 1,000 subscribers. I cannot believe it. It's, I, okay, I'm recording this on Sunday the 13th, okay, of December. This doesn't go up for about a week, and uh, we, we hit it on, I think it was Thursday of this past week, so like I was on the 10th or something, so just thank you guys so, so much. I really do appreciate it, but the grind does not stop. The journey is not over. If you guys have not subscribed already, make sure to subscribe. I some really special plan for the 1000 subscriber milestone video so we haven't done one of these in like three years that's our last milestone video so make sure to subscribe stick around join the ocean and let's go ahead and jump into this team builder and the battle So looking at my opponent's team, big things I want to point out. The biggest threats are the Aromatisse, because once that thing is gone, our Shifu goes in. The Latios, because it hits just so incredibly hard, but I feel like I can deal with it pretty damn well. And then the Rotom. The Rotom is the big one as well, because it's just so damn bulky. It stabs are really good against my team. Obviously not the Appleton, but it can still Toxic me, will o me, wear me down that way. And it's just really annoying. So I feel like we have a really solid matchup in this time around. It's actually really good, provided that our Heat comes through. And yes, I'm bringing Heat. Not just as meta gross we got another mod that is an absolute fire set but let's go ahead and jump into it our first mod is going to be our metagross here now metagross is really interesting because it, it outspeeds a ton of stuff once we get our boost off when we get to plus two we outspeed scarf rotom wash we do not outspeed scarf um latios we also outspeed i think it's a modest a cell gore well we're at plus two i think that's what the calc is for um but at the end of the day it's, it's just hits so freaking strong if we manage to get off our meteor beam with a plus one boost as let's say the rotom goes for like a will or something because again if i go for a a rock polish as it's like let's say let's say it's metagross versus aromatisse i go for rock polish because obviously i'm gonna go for rock polish you can't touch me and he switches out into rodent to take any steel move then i can then freely get off a meteor beam it's gonna do like 70 percent of that thing i'll get the plus one psychic 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 kind of go for a game like that it works really well we also take a no special attack or two no special attack hydro pumps from the rotom and we also take a timid specs mystical fire from the latios or a life orb shadow ball after rocks from that Latios. Those are the big threats because they really hit really hard on the special side. They can burn me with uh, with will o -Wisp. They can annoy me with Volt Switch, whatever. So those are the biggest threats. And honestly, once the Corviknight gets weakened, this set can really just rip through my opponent's entire team. There's really no other answers that he has for it unless he's running like a calm minding Latios. And even then, he's not appreciating taking Flash Cannon into Flash Cannon. It's just, he's just not. So that is our Metagross. It's a very strong set. I absolutely love it. It might be the, the reason we win. It might be the reason we lose. Who knows? But hey, I really like this set. I think it's really cool. And and if we manage to get rid of the aromatisse then using this set specifically then our our, our shifu just goes absolutely to town and it's going to be amazing that is going to be our metagross moving on to our next mod it is going to be our urshifu with the choice scarf the reason i'm running choice scarf is because once the aromatisse goes down look at my opponent's switch to fighting and to dark coverage to dark coverage specifically like he's got one resist two resists it's the aromatisse and he's got the polyrath polyrath is incoming so he's gonna have one resist to dark crazy the only issue is Aromatisse is a pretty good check to Urshifu. It does get Wish Protect. Issue is I can't just click Poison Jab freely because he does have a really good Steel type in the Corviknight. And because I want to run Iron Head specifically because it also hits something like the, um, what is that thing called? The Avalug as well. So that was my best bet. I, didn't, I just didn't want to be locked into Poison Jab against the Corviknight letting it set up or something so i decided to say you know what i'll go for iron head at least that way i get a chance to flinch instead of poison flinching is a little bit better than poisoning so yeah that's gonna be our shifu in a speed for jolly polyrath while well, we're at neutral so that gives us so much extra investment to put into our bulk and to put into our attack with an adamant nature we have speed from modest selgor with our choice scarf that's what it was for this one had speed from modest selgor with the choice scarf my mistake metagross outspeeds even timid a selgor so that's amazing but this set really hits everything and we also with our investment into hp and defense special defense rather we take a timid scarf 
Draco from the Latios. Again, we, we're not worried about it being Specs or it being Life Orb because if it is, we outspeed it and we fire off a U-turn or a Wicked Blow or whatever the case may be. And honestly, I kind of expect it to be either like an Expert Belt slash Life Orb set or a Culberberry set to take hits from the Urshifu and fire off an attack. That is my expectation with it. Moving on to our next Mon, it is going to be our Raikou. Raikou has such a good matchup because look at this coverage. Electric, Ghost, and, and uh, Goat. No, wait. Electric, Ghost, and Water. That's it. Electric, Ghost, and Water hits my opponent's team for amazing damage. Everything is hit by this thing, at least neutrally. Shadow Ball for the Latios, for the, I guess, that's pretty much it, honestly. Well, and the Curse Law, I guess. But Thunderbolt and Skull hit everything else for amazing damage. If the Corviknight comes in, I get a free Volt Switch, unless the Stun Fisk is there. But even then, I can just click Skull freely. I can weaken the Stun Fisk, potentially get a burn. I can burn the Corviknight if he stays in. Honestly, it's just an amazing, amazing set. Maybe Life Orb is not the best idea because I don't want to be taking too much chip, but I really want that extra damage output on absolutely everything. So I found that Life Orb is going to be a really solid option for me to run. Maybe if I if I prepped a bit more, if I maybe if I kind of went a bit more in depth, I might have thought of an Expert Belt set or even uh, Shuckaberry. But I really like the Life Orb, so that's going to be what we're running. We have speed for the Latios. Like I said, everything is hit by at least neutral on this set, and we come in on the Corviknight, the Golbat, the Polyrath, and just break something, and that's. Pretty much it. I, I love this set. It's going to be fantastic for us. Moving on, our next mod is going to be our Swampert. Now, Swampert is the next mod with the heat. Darkest Lariat, Rest Hawk, Bulk Up. What the hell is this? Once the Aromatisse goes down, this set just wins. I'm not even kidding. Unless he's running like Energy Ball on Latios and he's like, even if he gets Specs locked into that or Scarf locked into that, I'm cool with that because it lets me bring in something else and go for game. So I really like this set. It's It sets up on so much. It rest talks up on so much. We are so specially defensive. We don't need much physical defense because we're boosting that all up with a bulk up. It's just, it's awesome. We take Scarf Latios' Energy Ball. We also take three Laddy Scarfed Psychics, okay? And we are meant to beat everything but Grass Users or Romatisse. And uh, his only Grass Users are the the Latios with Energy Ball, the Energy Ball or Giga Draining Selgor, and then the... Aromatisse, which cannot have Energy Ball, but also is the Aromatisse, which resists my Dark-type move. Obviously, I can't run a ground move because of the Latios, the Corviknight, the Rotom, and the Golbat. He has th four ground immunities. I can't run a Water move because I'm really afraid of the Latios. That's the big thing. It also has potential for a Water Absorb in Polyrath. I believe Polyrath gets Water Absorb. Um, and I, if, I have, if I have Darkest Lariat, honestly, I can beat an Iron Defensing set of anything, like the Corviknights or whatever. So I feel like that was going to be the best option to run. Um, we'll see if that was a mistake later on. But let's go ahead and jump into our next which is going to be making its debut, the Cryogonal. Cryogonal is now the final mon on our team that has hit the field. Every single thing on my roster has now come to a game. Amazing. Love that. Freeze dry, knock off, flash cannon, recover with the never melt ice with a modest nature and speed for the polyrath because my opponent has such a huge jump in speed. I don't expect him to be like a max speed Rotom at all. And if he is, he's not going to want to stay in on a Cryogonal with freeze dry. But we, we have so much bulk. It allows us to really take his well from my opponent's team. We actually take a Life Orb Psy Shock or a Corviknight's max defense defensive body press, well, a Life Orb Latios' Psy Shock, rather, or a max defense body press from the Corviknight with our defense investment. We can recover back up on things like the Rotom. We honestly wall the Rotom pretty damn well. Obviously, you can go for, like, Voltage against me, it can toxic me or whatever, but if it doesn't toxic me and it burns me, then I'm okay with that because I can just knock off items, freeze dry consistently, flash cannon against the Aromatisse. It's going to be more physically defensive than especially defensive with a modest nature and our special attack. We should be doing a ton to it. Honestly, this set is fantastic. I really like it as a way to kind of chip down the stun fisk as well. Just going to be really, really good for us. It is going to be my lead because it only gets like Oko by very few things like Spec Psy Shock from the Latios. Even then, it's like a roll, I believe, if he's timid. So it's, it's a really good set nonetheless, and I'm really hoping it can be the MVP of of our, our team this week, even though it's only his first week in the league for us. Our next mod is going to be our Moltres. It is our final one with Mystical Fire, U-Turn, Roost, and Toxic. The reason I'm running Mystical Fire is in case he's running a setuping Latios, a setuping Rotom, a setuping um, Romantis, whatever, I can then Mystical Fire, lower the special attack of those Pokemon, Toxic them, U-Turn out, and get momentum to one of my bigger threats. And we're running the Heavy Duty Boost this week, even though my opponent really only has a couple of really valid rockers. The big one is going to be the Stunt Fist. That's actually it. Uh, I would love to run leftovers or something but the threat of uh stunt fisk with rocks is just too big for me it's too big i have to worry about it stunt fisk would likely be coming in all honestly because it's going to be a way to deal with my raikou so i feel pretty good about him running stunt fisk with rocks chip down the more the moltres and stuff it's going to be a really strong set oh also the corsola cursula gets rocks so 
yeah, uh, that's our Moltres. Guys, this is our team. It, the investment on the Moltres is there so we can take a modest Corsola. Wow, I keep calling it Corsola. Corsola's Hydro Pump or two modest Shadow Balls. Uh, we also take a Specs Latios' Draco Meteor and the rest is put in by defense for the Corviknight. And we're modest so we can just improve our chances at 2k on the Corviknight as best as possible, especially if it's specially defensive. So yeah, that is our team, guys. Let's go ahead and jump into the battle. All right, everyone, we are back. Looking at this team, he did not bring the Corviknight. Uh, super weird, but I mean... Hey, whatever works for him, I guess. But he did bring the Latios, he did bring the Stunfisk, he did bring the Aromatisse, which are big threats. The Cursula, I guess, kind of makes sense because Ghost is really strong against my team, even though I do have an Arshifu. Uh, and it is kind of fodder for that Arshifu. I can fire off a Wicked Blow against it. Oh, that's great. Um, honestly, I'm kind of wishing I had Rocks up this week because if I can chip things down, he only has, uh, he has two Defoggers in the Rotom and the Latios. I don't expect the Rotom to be carrying Defog and I don't expect the Latios to be carrying Defog as well. So I wish I kind of had Rocks this week, but it is what it is. Moving on, let's just jump into it. Uh, I'm going to lead off with my Cryogonal. That was going to be my lead of choice. So let's go ahead and lead off with Snow Days off our Cryogonal. Uh, I believe that was Meta Night King who gave me that nickname, but I'm going to go for a freeze dry here as he goes for a shy shock and he crits me, not crits me, but KOs me. Um, I'm going to pause it. So the, the side shock there, he only KOs me there if he is specs. And it really, really sucks that he ends up being specs because I would have loved to have gotten damage off on that thing. It, it really changes a lot that he ended up being specs and not, well, <laughs> Scarf. If he was Scarf, it would have been great. If he was Life Orb, it would have been amazing because we can then get off a Freeze Dry on it. It just, it really, really sucks that he ends up being Specs there. We lose our Cragnal we'll turn one in his first game. Doesn't even get to make an attack. Insane. Wow. But it's okay. I can go into my Urshifu here. I can force in the Aromatisse and I can go for a U-turn here as he does go into the Aromatisse. And this is perfect because I get free reign to go into my Metagross here and just click a very free Rock Polish. So I'm going to go for that Rock Polish here. He's probably going to go into the Rotom here, maybe into the Stunfisk. It depends. I guess he probably wouldn't go to Stunfisk, honestly, but maybe. But I go for the Rock Polish here as he goes into the Rotom and I can fire off the Meteor Beam now. We'll pop our Power Herb. We're going to do so much damage to this thing. Meteor Beam comes out and we miss. We miss. We miss. I I can't believe it. I, we, <laughs> this was the perfect set, and we missed. Uh, we still got the special attack boost, which is nice, but I, I cannot believe that we missed. We have burnt as well on top of that. Um, that really, really sucks. I, I, damn it, because I Psychic now, and we do 68%. We would have been able to kill this Rotom, chip something down, been at like almost 100%. That really, really sucks because now he goes into Cursula here and I have to go for a Psychic. I, I have to, honestly. Um, I probably could have gone up a second Meteor Beam, honestly, against it, but we go for a Psychic. He's going to fire off a Hex and that's going to get the KO on us. Um, depending on his set, I don't know if that would have KO'd us at full, but it probably would have, honestly. It's super effective. It's stabbed. Cursula's got 100, like 50 special attack, basically. It's insane, but it's okay. I, he goes into Stun Fisk here on my Raikou as I can just fire off a Shadow Ball. I went for Shadow Ball there. It was a no drawback play. I could have easily gone for a Skull predicting the Stun Fisk, but I just felt like Shadow Ball is my best option because I am Life Orb. I don't want to take too much chip from the Cursula, so I felt like just KOing it outright was going to be the best option. But we're already down our Metagross and our Curse Law, which is huge. And now it makes it that this, look, look, that Aromatisse is such a huge problem for me now. I have to toxic it and hope that it doesn't have Heal Bell. If it doesn't have Heal Bell, then I'm fine. But if it has Heal Bell, then it's probably going to be a, either a long game or a really quick game in terms of Davian's favor. But uh, it's okay. I go into our Shifu here as I expect him to go for, I don't know, like a, yeah, an Earthquake, basically. I expected, honestly, a ground move, uh, but I didn't want to risk the Rock move or the Discharge um, hitting my, my Moltres. That's why I decided to go into this. I also did not want to get Toxic on my, on my what's it called, um, my Swamper. That's it. The other thing I noticed is, based on that damage that I had done to him, I know that he's Assault Vest as well. So I know this is an Assault Vest Stun Fisk, and I really want to start chipping my opponent's team down. So I can go for a free U-turn here. He's going to go back to the Aromatisse. We're just going to start chipping this down, wearing it down, wearing it down. We end up critting it with Liquid Blow, actually. That's what I want to do. Um, I played this game like a week and a half ago, so I apologize. But uh, I'm going to switch out, go into the Moltres here. We take anything this thing wants to go for. So he just fires off a Thunderbolt. So he makes that prediction, does about 37% to me, which isn't too much, but it's enough to really weaken me substantially. I'm going to go for a Toxic here, though. As he's gonna end up going into the Rotom Wash. Now, uh, I was kind of hoping to weaken this thing a bit more. Uh, if I could have gotten rid of this thing early on, you're gonna see this Rotom Wash is such a huge pain for me to deal with. It really is so, so strong. But he goes for the Toxic here, Toxicing my Moltres, which really sucks because I get my Roost off now. And Moltres is really not gonna be able to wear things down as much as I would like it to because I am now Toxic. So we know this thing has Toxic. We know this thing has Will-O-Wisp. It probably has Bolt Switch. There we go. And Hydro Pump. And you're gonna see 46% to me from Bolt Switch is insane. He goes into the Latios as I'm gonna fire off a U turn here. And we hatch the Latios. We crit it unfortunate for him but honestly it really doesn't matter too much because Latios is scarf he really just wants to do as much damage as possible i have another very free u-turn here as so he goes into his aromatisse and obviously the u-turn was free there because we would have ko'd the moltres not the moltres but the latios on uh, on this 
on the attack and we get momentum into the into our Moltres here if he went into the Romatisse, which he did. Anyways, I'm going to go for a Roost here, try to figure out what he wants to go for. So he's going to fire off a Wish, I believe, over here. So Wish comes out, and again, still just hoping that he doesn't have access to Heal Bell. If he has Heal Bell, it really sucks. But uh, at this point in time, I'm just going to go for a Mystical Fire, try to weaken this thing a little bit. We do 36% to it. That is insane. It's so much damage to it. He goes for Aromatherapy, though, and that guy is going to be really, really tough to beat because he has Wish, he has Moonblast, probably, he has Aromatherapy, and he has Thunderbolt. And having no Protect on this thing sucks. The fact that he has access to Aromatherapy really, really hurts us. Um, especially because we're toxic. If we weren't toxic, I can just easily run all the aromatherapies out of this thing. And I kind of wish I was running, um, I was running pressure on Moltres. I believe he gets pressure. But if I was running pressure or something on it, oh my god, that'd have been fantastic for me because I could just weaken. I can like at this point he'd be out of basically four aromatherapies, which sucks. But it's okay. I go into my Swamper here. And I'm kind of thinking like I can really wear this thing down. But I'm gonna switch out, go back to the Moltres here, predicting in case. Because I, I honestly am a positive. The reason I made that prediction is because he has not revealed the Moonblast yet. Like you want to see here, he hasn't revealed Moonblast, right? No. Thunder both wish or therapy are his three moves that he's revealed i'm thinking he has moonblast but i have to play it safe so i made the double expecting him to go for an energy ball to try and catch my my swamper so i made that double into the moltres unfortunately it didn't really work out for me because he goes into the rotom here and it sucks because i have to double back into swamper here on what i'm expecting to be a volt switch but he goes for the hydro pump doing a quarter that's nothing i'm, I'm cool with that damage it is nothing at all uh we know he's faster than us and yeah it's it's just Honestly, this, this Rotom is such a huge problem for me. I, I feel like I'm just start bulking up though because it can't really touch me too much. Anyways, at this point, we're going to get back some recovery from our leftovers. And we're at plus one, which is not bad. I can go for another uh, bulk up here. So he's going to miss his Hydro Pump, which is, I mean, he's going to miss a couple. It's going to happen. Um, not like I want to miss my Meteor Beam, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, at this point, like, all I can do is really just set up as much as possible, go for a rest at some point, and I kind of believe I do that now because I don't want to KO, get KO'd to the next Hydro Pump after the Toxic damage. We get back up to full, and he now knows that I have a rest and bulk up. He doesn't know what else I have, but he's going to go into the Curse Light here as I go for a Sleep Talk, and I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that I can roll my my, my Darkest Lariat. And thankfully, Sleep Talk comes out, and I roll Darkest Lariat, and we get the KO on the Curse Light. So we at least get one KO. It's not a 6 0, 24 turns in. That's amazing. He's going to go into the Latios here. I'm going to pause it because this is an important play. Um, I can go for a sleep talk here and hopefully rule the darkest lariats. The, other, the thing is, if he goes for energy ball, I'm going to lose my Swamper. And Swamper right now is my win con. I kind of have to crit through the Romatisse, but if I can do that, I can win the game. So I felt like that was my best play to just switch out. And honestly, if he goes for anything else, I take the hit. I take anything. Psychic, Draco, whatever. So I'm going to switch out and go to Moltres expecting the grass move to come out. Unfortunately for me, you're going to see here, he doesn't go for a grass move. He fires off the Draco. So we know Draco, he doesn't have any grass move. And we can take the Draco, which does like 75% to our Swamper, which is nothing. But I can go into my Raikou here. Uh, I think I went to Raikou because the the Skull was so free that I felt like it was just a no-drawback play. So I go to, into my Raikou. He goes into a Stunt Fisk here. And I believe I just fire off the Skull here. And we do a solid chunk of damage to it. 29% isn't bad at all. Uh, we take some more Life Orb Chip. And I believe here I'm just going to switch out and go into my Swamper here. Because we can take anything this wants to go for. It really is not that... like look. Earthquake does nothing to us. It's, it's nothing. So I can recover back some HP, go for another sleep talk. I have one turn left while I'm asleep. And are we going to roll a bulk up? I would love to roll a bulk up here. And we end up rolling rest, which sucks. But it is what it is. It's not the end of the world. I can just wake up here. I'm going to go for a bulk up. It's very free as well. So there's no reason for me not to do that. And I think it's just, just going to let me set up, which is weird. But I'm going to set up. I'm going to try and get the plus six and try and go for game. Um, as I go for Darkest Lariat, expecting the Lydos to come in. What am I saying? <laughs> That's the issue with post comms, guys. I try to do my best to watch them in advance, but there's so many turns in these games. This, this game was actually 100 turns long, so it's crazy. But I'm going to bulk up here as I take a sip of water. Honestly, I'm just going to set up as much as possible. That is me the plan here. I rest up, and he's going to attack me again. You're going to see it does very little damage as he has, like, mixed earth power and earthquake. It, it, they're both doing nothing to me. Like, after recovery, it's doing 13%. That's nothing. So I go for a sleep talk here. And I end up rolling the uh, the rest again, which sucks, but I mean, it's not the end of the world. I would really like to roll the uh, the, the the bulk up, but hey, it is what it is. Honestly, if the Aromatisse is at like 80%, which it's not, you're going to see, like if I look over, it's at 100%. If it was at 80% and I get to plus 6, then I can beat it 1v1. But because it's at 100%, it's going to be really, really difficult for me to beat that thing 1v1. But I have no more turns left of Sleep Talk, and um, I'm going to pause it here. So he goes for Draco, you guys see that. But... I'm not going to go for a rest here. I'm going to go for a, um, a Darkest Lariat because I don't want this thing coming in and critting me. I don't want it to get weakened. Maybe this is a mistake, but I'm going to go for the Darkest Lariat here. And we do, he does 71% to us. He never KO'd us here. He never did unless he was modest, which I don't think he was. And we can fire off a Darkest Lariat and get the KO. Okay. So 
this is my this is my my debate. Do I make a misplay there by not going for a rest and then just trying to wear things down? Because if that's the strongest thing you can use to hit us, as long as I'm over that 71 or 78% threshold, then I'm good to go against that. But I didn't feel like the reason I went for the Dark Slayer there was because I didn't feel like I was going to get put into, put into a position where I can make sure I'm always going to be at least at 78%. And at that point, I have to rely on like a Darkest Lariat off of Sleep Talk. I'm going to have to rely off of uh, a miss from Draco Meteor or whatever. So I didn't feel like it was going to be the most optimal play. So I decided to go for the Darkest Lariat there. It invites in the Rotom. It invites in the Acel Gore to KO me. But that's okay. I have other options. I can sack off my, my Raikou. I can sack off my Urshifu and kind of go from there. Uh, over here, it's a tough decision. What do I sack off? Well, I sack off. I'm, well, I just paused like 10 times. I sack off my Raikou here. Um, the reason I sack off Raikou over Urshifu is because Urshifu can still go for Iron Heads. Looking at Rotom, Rotom is, to well, it's not toxic anymore, but it's at 55%. If I can Iron Head flinch it down enough, then I can kind of beat it 1v1, which I'm cool with. Um, so I definitely felt like that was my, my best option. But I don't, I don't know. It's it was a tough decision to make. It really was. But. Raikou's just gonna die here to the next bug buzz. There's not much I can do about it. Uh, I don't think he specs from that damage that he had done to me, so I feel fine about that. It's not as strong. Uh, he's playing off Scarf either, but I go into my Urshifu here. I click Wicked Blow. He reveals to be Sashed. And I'm gonna pause because that was there a nice, like, 50 50. Um, does he switch out and go into the Aromatisse? And if he does that, that's great for him. He ends up benefiting greatly. Or does he stay in? And I predict him to stay in, and I got that play right. He's going to end up going for the, uh, I believe the bug was here, as he does. And we end up taking that hit. Unfortunately for me, he does have Earn Burden active. So I, I'm losing something here. I am. It's just, it's, it's straight up, because my Swamp is at 14%. But he makes a really weird play and switches on to Romatisse, which is interesting, because I, I don't know, it's really interesting, because I go for Wicked Blow, do about 28% to him. I'm just going to keep Wicked Blowing until I die, honestly. There's really not much that I can do about it. Um... It's doing less than half. Two of them does less than half. That's crazy. As he goes for Draining Kiss. That is his final move against me. So he's at 64%. If I was at plus six, I could beat it 1v1. I'm just not at plus six. So I really can't beat it. It sucks because we're here. We're 39 turns in and I get my rest off. And I can tell you guys, this game does not end until turn 117. It is crazy. Uh, I actually get completely PP stalled out. And it's to the point where I'm using Struggle. So he could have won 3-0 there if he stayed in with his Unburdened Nacelle Gore. It would have outsped Scarf or Shifu but he did not, and you're going to see, I'm, I'm, honestly, I'm not going to play it all because it's crazy. It's, it's There's so much that goes on, so I'm actually going to skip to turn, we'll skip to turn 80, okay? Um, we skip to turn 80 here. Eventually, they'll get, it'll load and get there, but honestly, there is so much. We just doubled the turn count, and it, it, there's so much stall that goes on. Like, we, we have so much. So turn 80 comes out. Everything's still around. I'm at plus 6. I'm just stalling things out. I have 8 bulk ups left. I have 11 rests. I have 9 sleep talks. And I have 3 darkest lariats left. I need 3 to KO the Aromatisse. I need 1 to KO the Rotom because it's at 100%. And then I need to struggle to KO the Acelgor, but I still take 25% uh, from it. So it really sucks. You're going to see here he has 4 T-Bolts, 5 Wishes. That's the big thing. If I can wear him out of Wishes, I'll, I'll be fine. If he didn't have Leftovers, I could do it. But he has Leftovers. If he didn't have Aromatherapy, I could have done it. But he has Aromatherapy. Basically, this Aromatisse was the perfect, perfect, perfect set. It really was amazing for him, and it's going to cause so many problems for me. I'm going to put this to fast because I can kind of talk over it. Um, eventually, what's going to happen is he's going to go into his Acelgor, um, and he's going to really chip me down. Maybe, honestly, guys, just maybe if it was a timer, if it, this was on like Showdown, or not Showdown, but Wi-Fi, um, I would have wanted to do the timer, maybe, but... It, it's unlikely. I was clicking my moves really fast. I think David was taking a bit of his time, but it's on Showdown. It's my, it's because of me that we're on Showdown in the first place. So I can't really, like, I can't go out and make that accusation. I can't say that at all. So it's just me not bringing the right set. If I brought, look, honestly, if I brought Liquidation there, this game's over and we win. But hey, um, it's what it is. If you guys didn't know, Darkest Lariat, uh, if you are Sleep Talk, if you roll Sleep Talk, it takes away a PV from Sleep Talk, but it doesn't take away a PV from the move that you use. So if I roll Darkest Lariat, as long as I have one Darkest Lariat, I can actually use it, which is great. But uh, you're going to see he ends up pulling off the uh, the Wish into the, the Acel Gore, and I fire off the Darkest Lariat to get the KO on that. So we end up, we end up tri trimming it down to a 2-0, it's going to look like. But unless we crit him with like multiple attacks, we're going to lose. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, we don't. Uh, I'm just going to go forward to turn, let's go to turn 110, because we're that's 10 turns away from now. But hey, there's really not much that we can do in this situation, guys. We're 110 turns in. At this point in time, look at what we have left. We have zero bulk ups, two rests, two sleep talks, one darkest lariat. Just too bad I didn't run liquidation. It's it's a damn shame. Um, 
yeah, <laughs> I don't know much to say. It sucks, but we're gonna fall here. We're gonna lose uh, two or uh, yeah, two zero. As I'm just gonna skip forward a bit to the point where we can get burnt. There we go. We're out of rest now as well. We're out of sleep talks. We're out of everything. I'm gonna go for a struggle soon. I when when did you guys think you're gonna see me use a struggle in a draft league game? When did you guys think that? Crazy. Um, the props to Davian. He brought a really strong aroma tea set. It ends up being the the reason he's gonna win this game. We do 21% only as well, and he's gonna just wish up back his HP and be completely fine. So it sucks. He played really well. He played the 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 stall really well and ended up benefiting him. So good shit, man. Um, but yeah, I don't really have much else to say. We're gonna be back next week. I don't know who we're playing yet. I can't remember. But uh, oh, we're playing Live actually. Ooh, we're playing Live. So make sure we got come back and check that out. I think we're both three and two, so that's not bad at all. Uh, could be a really important game for playoffs positioning but yeah thanks for watching wow let's try it again thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed it. if you did leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you have not already help us get on to our next subscriber milestone the next goal again i appreciate you guys for helping me reach a thousand subscribers and i'll see you guys all next time